Hello and welcome to my channel, Rise Up Diabetic Health. I am Alyssa. I have been type 1 diabetic for almost eight years now. So I was diagnosed when I was 21 years old. In that past um, eight years of living with diabetes, I have learned so much about myself and blood sugar management. And that is exactly why I wanted to create this channel to share my knowledge and experience with all of you. Little background about me. I have my master's in exercise physiology, and I'm also a certified strength and conditioning specialist. So I currently work as a performance coach where I help clients reach their fitness and health goals through movement and lifestyle habits. Um, and I'm also, my goal is to eventually become a certified health coach as well. So I can combine that um, physical movement side of things and diabetes management together and ultimately help diabetes, people living with diabetes to become the best version of themselves. Okay, so since this is my first video on the channel, I thought it would only be fitting to do a five things I've learned about diabetes so far. So let's get into number one which is going to be that a pre-bolus does matter. Now, my first six years of being diabetic, I'm not gonna lie, I was very resistant, resistant to the idea of pre-bolusing before my meals, and it definitely did take a toll on my blood sugar management, and I had a lot more spikes. So when I finally decided to pre-bolus, it made a huge difference in my time and range, and that is really helpful. So let's start with what a pre is. So it's that idea of taking your insulin prior to your meal to give that insulin time to become effective and ultimately it can help minimize the spikes that you may see in your blood sugar. So super beneficial and can be also super beneficial in affecting like your mood, fatigue, um, stress levels and all that good stuff. So it's a very important thing to be doing and it took me six years to figure that out. One tip that I do like to give people for um, holding yourself accountable to that pre bolus is to set a timer. So that's something that I have started doing where I will prepare my meal, figure out how many carbs I'm going to be eating and then I'll take that insulin and then set a timer on my phone. So depending on you know all those variables that I just talked about, I'm gonna set that timer to where I think it was appropriate. And then that way I have that you know time to hold me accountable. Um, so I don't eat too early, or I also, it also prevents me from not eating too late. So sometimes I'll just like decide to go do something in the meantime while I'm waiting, and then I get distracted, and before I know it, it's been 30 minutes, and my blood sugar has like dropped to a low. So definitely helps to have something like that to hold you accountable until you kind of form that habit a little bit better. All right, number two on the list is you are the expert of your body. Um, the more time I've spent living with diabetes, the more I've truly realized that everybody's body is different and a cookie cutter approach is just not going to cut it. So you're gonna know your body the best and your blood sugar tendencies I definitely encourage you to write down as much as you can and find patterns that are specific to you and your body. Right, number three on the list is that your insulin to carb ratios and basal rates are not set in stone. So just know that our bodies are constantly changing and we need as diabetics to, you know, recognize those changes and you know, make some changes on our end. So there's so many variables that can come into a play that, um, you know, might cause you to have to change your insulin to carb ratio and your basal rates at any time. So it's important to have more awareness around that. So some of the variables that come into play are gonna be like hormonal fluctuations throughout the month, the nutrition of the food that you are eating, stress levels you may be experiencing, um, your activity level, if you've been more active or less active, those can all come into play in, you know, needing, for you need, needing to change that insulin to curve ratio and basal rate. All right, number four is movement is key. I have always been super passionate about moving my body. As a young kid, I was playing sports 
all the time. And when I got diagnosed as diabetic, it just helped me appreciate um, the concept of movement even more, just because I saw that how movement can affect my blood sugar, um, mostly in a positive way. Sometimes it can be in a little bit of a negative way, but I use that to my advantage. Um, it is something that can truly, truly help your diabetes management and movement can be so much more beyond just going to the gym to do your workout. It could be um, going for a walk, it could be gardening, it could be doing your laundry. Anything that involves not sitting on your butt is gonna be great for your diabetes. All right, last and final one, we've got number five here which is going to be the importance of time and range over A1C. So in the first six years of being diabetic, I was very resistant to putting anything on my body. So I didn't wear a sensor and I also had never used an insulin pump yet. Um, and I just managed my diabetes through test strips. So I maybe pricked my fingers like six times a day and then got my A1C lab test every three months. So that was my way of knowing, you know, how I was doing with my diabetes management. So with that, I honestly had no idea what um, time and range I was, or I didn't even really have an idea of like that concept until I got a sensor, which was about two years ago. Um, I currently use the Dexcom sensor and it's been a life-changing transition because now I get to see my glucose numbers, you know, by the second every day and also have a way easier time recognizing patterns when I'm eating certain foods or working out and what happens to my blood sugars after the workout and all that. It's such a popular measure of um, diabetes management because it does give you an average of your blood glucose over those last three months, but it does not give you that complete picture. So take, for example, someone who experiences a lot of highs and lows, but overall their average might end up being around like 140. And then take another person who just tends to have a really great time and range and is basically, you know, very close to 140 all the time for those three months they would technically have the same A1C. So right there, you can see like the discrepancy of how it doesn't give you that complete picture. So I think time and range is super important to pay attention to because the less um, roller coaster spikes and ups and downs that we have, um, the less we experience, you know, that fatigue and it puts less stress on our body as a whole. So it's definitely an important thing to pay attention to when you're thinking about your diabetes right. So that is the five things that I have learned with having diabetes over the last eight years. There are definitely many, many more things that I could talk about, which I will make some more videos, but thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.